Alcohol can be made in several ways. One way is through substitution reactions involving haloalkenes. For example, 2-bromobutane. If you take a closer look at this region, you'll notice that there's a difference in electronegativity between these two atoms, which does result in a polar bond. As such, this is delta positive and this is delta negative. A nucleophile like the hydroxide ion, which are ions or groups of atoms that are attracted to delta positive regions, will realistically, it will be in the form of sodium hydroxide. This will induce a dipole on this carbon. This pushes the electrons closer to our halogen and forces it to leave as a bromide ion. And the hydroxide gets its place in the molecule resulting in butantuol and sodium bromide, a simple substitution reaction. The ease at which these substitution reactions occurs obviously depends on the amount of energy needed to break the initial carbon-halogen bond, also known as the bond energy. As you move down the halogen group, the bond energy decreases. In fact, fluorine being at the top, which has such a high bond energy with carbon, is unlikely to react. Ethanol can also be produced via anaerobic fermentation. This involves simple sugars like glucose being converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide. In the lab, we tend to use yeast, which provides the enzyme to ferment the sugars. The glucose enters the cells through the cell wall, where it is used as energy through normal metabolic pathways, but under very strict conditions. For one, fermentation is exothermic, so temperature must be controlled at around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. This is best for yeast and enzymes as they're extremely temperature sensitive and enzymes can denature outside this range. Well, at least the enzymes from the yeast may. This leads into pH. Fermentation needs to be slightly acidic. It also needs to be anaerobic conditions as in the absence of oxygen. If oxygen is present, the ethanol produced can be oxidized into ethanol and eventually ethanoic acid which is that sour taste in wine if it's left out too long. Under normal conditions, the fermentation can proceed until the ethanol concentration reaches about 15% by volume in your flask, for example. At this concentration, the yeast can no longer survive and the fermentation ceases. Hence, naturally fermented wines usually have ethanol concentrations in the range of 12 to 15%.